everyone. Thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity to present today. My name is Anna Hochleitner and I'm currently a PhD student at the University of Nottingham. The project I'm going to talk to you about today is called Strategic Behavior with Tight and Loose Norms, and this is joint work together with Eugen Diemand, Michelle Gelfand, and Sylvia Sonderegger. The motivation for this project um, really comes from the observation that a very powerful factor influencing human behavior are social norms. And what previous studies um, have typically been doing is looking how information about the mean behavior of others is affecting individual decisions. However, one dimension that has been paid less attention to is the variance of behavior. And this is exactly what we want to look at in our project. As the title says, we're looking at tight and loose norms. So what do we mean by this? Following previous work by Michelle, um, we define tight norms as a situation where behavior is very well defined. So a situation in which we have almost um, no variance. And as you can see in the picture, most people behave in a similar way. By contrast, under loose norms, we understand a situation in which we have a much greater behavioral variance. Comparing those two pictures, um, actually the mean and median behavior is exactly different, um, identical, but what differs between the two pictures is um, the distribution that is around this mean or median. So what are the questions we want to answer in this project? Um, in a strategic environment, how do people react when faced with an environment where there's a lot of behavioral variation? And by contrast, how do they react in an environment where behavior is very tightly distributed? To answer this question, um, we're, questions, we're looking at a design um, that is um, distributed into three parts. And the strategic setup we're looking at thereby is a public goods game. So in the first and last part of the experiment, um, we're looking at behavior and norms in the public goods game. And in the middle, we're having um, treatment manipulation in which we show participants one out of six possible distributions. And participants also know that for the last part of the experiment, the player they're being matched with in the public goods game is drawn from one of these, is drawn from the distribution they, ha they have been shown. So how do these distributions look like? They are actually varying along two dimensions. The first one is the relative tightness or looseness of the distribution. Um, so as you can see here in this picture to the left, um, we're facing a situation where behavior is quite concentrated and almost everyone is contributing one or two tokens. So, th so this would be a tight norm. In the middle, we see an example of a very loose norm where behavior is much more varied. And to the right, we also see a distribution which a lot of behavior um, varies. But here, behavior is polarized with people either contributing nothing at all or contributing fully to the public good. And secondly, we also vary um, the mean of um, observed contributions. So in the first row, you see um, that people on average contributed 1.6 in all three treatments. And in the second row, um, they're contributing 2.4. So we again, we're keeping the difference between tight and loose norms, but in the first row, we have a relatively low mean, and in the second, we have a relatively high. Um, next, I want to briefly um, talk to you how we measure behavior in the public goods game. Um, so we're looking at a very standard public goods game with two players, and we have, where we have the traditional tension between doing the socially optimal thing and contribute everything to the group account, or free riding and maximizing your individual payoffs. In order to um, tease out uh, underlying cooperative tendencies and reciprocity, we're using the ABC method that has been developed by Simon Gecht and co-authors. We thereby am looking at contributions to the public good, then beliefs about how much the other player contributes, and finally attitudes, which means fixing beliefs about the other player, saying the other player contributes why, how much do you want to contribute in this case? And this really allows us to tease out the strategic element of this game. Secondly, we're also eliciting norms um, in this context to be able to control for them in our analysis. And we're looking at both personal norms and um, personal values, as well as normative and empirical expectations. So what do we find in our experiment? Our main result is that looser norms generate a higher variance in individual responses. And this picture actually is quite striking if you think about the um, treatment, um, the picture of the different treatments I showed you a few slides ago. Um, as it shows that when people are confronted with different um, distributions, they actually react in a way that mirrors these contributions. Um, so in the first picture, those were people who saw um, the very tight distribution and people react by this, um, showing a very tight behavior with most people contributing two tokens. By contrast, if people are facing a lot of variance, their behavior is also much more varied. And this also shows that actually tight and loose norms are self-sustaining as people react exactly in the way 
they are observing um, behavior of others. And then finally, also very interesting, when we're looking at the polarized norm case, um, here people seem to react quite differently. So some people are focusing on the lower end and are contributing nothing, while others are contributing everything. And this is quite surprising because actually you also might think everyone reacts in the same way and chooses, for example, some middle ground. But it seems that people are reacting quite differently to this polarized information. And we find um, that one mediating factor for this are personal values. And this leads me to the second result, which shows the personal values matter more for individual behavior when norms are loose than when they are tight. And this is confirmed in a regression analysis. As you can see here in red, um, in the case of loose um, norm treatments, personal values have a much bigger influence than in the case of tight norm treatments. Then finally, um, confirming um, previous research, um, we also show um, that high mean treatments here in blue lead to significantly higher contribution levels. And interestingly, we also find that this effect is mediated by the norm's looseness or tightness. In particular, it seems um, that we only see this mean effect if we're looking at high, um, um, high variance treatments or at loose norm treatments. To sum up, um, in this study, we explore how the relative looseness or tightness of norms affect individual behavior. And we do so um, by showing participants um, different distributions um, of the behavior of other players that vary along the dimension of variance and mean. And what we find is that the relative looseness and tightness of norms matters a lot for individual behavior, which means that if um, we want to understand behavioral patterns, we should really incorporate um, this dimension in our analysis. Thanks a lot for listening. And if you have any thoughts or comments, um, I'm looking very much forward to hearing from you.